Uh, big day on the program, including later on uh, toward the end of the show, Steve Williams, the mayor of Huntington, who is rumored to be a potential candidate for governor on the Democratic side of things. Uh, certainly a full slate on the Republican side of big names. Democrat side starting to fill out a little bit with some possibilities. Ben Salango, we had him on last week. Steve Williams, the other uh, of the bigger names from the Democratic field, possibly in this race as well. We'll get his take on whether he's in or out coming up shortly. First segment, though, I want to welcome in school teacher and basketball coach Kelly Church. I remember when this guy was newly hired back in the late 90s, and here he is now. Uh, probably, what, the second most tenured coach behind Dave Rogers in the Eastern Panhandle now. Kelly, welcome in. Well, first of all, thank you guys very much for having me. Ironically, when you talk about the tenured thing, uh, when I got here, Dave was actually, uh, it was Vic Holmes who was the coach. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, as, as strange as it sounds, Dave's been, and again, a ton of respect for all that he's accomplished and all that he's done there. But ironically, if you go straight with tenure, who, who's been the longest, it's, ironically, yeah, it's me. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, um, it's good to have you here. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you guys having me in. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, start first and foremost with this uh, Hall of Fame award here. Tell me about this. Uh, well, I was uh, fortunate enough. I just found out recently that I was inducted into the, I guess, 2023 uh, Hall of Fame class with uh, you know some other obviously distinguished people from Hedgesville. And, you know, one of the things that I joke about all the time, even on this show, is, is uh, sometimes it's tough as no matter what is is, is unbelievably uh, I think it's a great place to live, great place to raise kids, uh, but it's also a place that, that protects their own. And so no matter what, I can't be from Hedgesville. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I didn't grow up here, but my, my family has, and uh, I'm extremely honored. And, and um, you know, it's it's humbling to – anytime you're put in any Hall of Fame, uh, you know, I think it's a humbling experience. So very proud of all our accomplishments. Uh, you know, obviously lots of parents, players, uh, certainly assistant coaches. It's not just me, but but – Obviously, it's a it's a very good feeling. How many of your former players are coaching now, Kelly? Uh, well, just the uh, well, some of them not even around here, uh, and there's some other people that that weren't mine that I think I helped a lot along the way. Uh, you know, one of them being Kyle Triggs, who's who's if things work out, he's going to be joining our staff. So uh, I'm really really excited about that. Um, you know, uh, but like me, you know, Mark Richmond, another one who was you know he's a Martinsburg kid. Uh, but I, I have a number of connections within the, the, the basketball community because of uh, when I was a when I was a really young person. I, I finished. I was at Longwood. And I tried to walk on, got cut, and <laughs> then I was the manager. And then I got to practice, and you know I, I did anything and everything I could to learn as much as I could from Coach Luther and and, and the staff there when I was there. Um, uh, but what I used to do is I used to work basketball camp every every single week. I would travel around the East Coast and go camp to camp to camp to try to develop as many relationships uh, as I possibly could. Uh, and in doing so, I made some really, really good friends who, who are, are pretty important people. I, I reference Jerry Wainwright all the time. Jerry Wainwright used to run five-star. Five, their, their AAU is way different now than it used to be. Five-star was what you did if you wanted to play college basketball. So... Um, I made a lot of good friends, uh, a lot of good relationships I still have. So I was able to help people like like Mark Richmond along the way, uh, my son, uh, you know, some different ones. But in the in the immediate area, um, you know, one of the things that's going to happen is the hall, the hall of Fame night is is actually when we the 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 football game is the Muscleman football game. Uh, so I already talked to 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 Brian and, and to Matt, uh, the two coaches, Brian Thomas and Matt Faircloth, and, and made sure they both were cool with we're, we're going to take a picture together before the game because I, I coached both of them. Uh, so, I, I, you know, although they're football coaches, uh, you know, it's still a pretty neat thing to Hall of Fame night and the two head coaches of the football teams are people who played basketball for me. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, got George Gosk at, at Spring Mills had a lot of success. Um, you know, uh, Ryan Miller played for me. Uh, he's the head coach at Washington. Uh, Kyle Van Meter is his top assistant who played for me. I mean, his you know, almost everybody on his staff was, was part of our staff before. Um, you know, Coach Samples at Spring Mills was – part of Hedgesville basketball for for uh, a couple years and so you know we, we, it's it's obviously it's flattering you know uh, I guess there's you know, uh, you know lo- lots of people will you know I am who I am uh, and at times like uh, <laughs> admittingly can be polarizing but it's I, I must be doing we must be doing something right to, to have that number of people go on to be the leaders in our community and it's not just the uh, it's not just the 
the you know the coaches uh you know uh, like patrick ashton is a is a pretty high up person in our in our community and mm-hmm. within the school board and, and and deals with the bus garage and there's just lots of kids joel silvers uh an administrator in jefferson county uh, joel coach for a long time too. yes sir yes sir and so you know we, we think we we've we do it the right way, and I try to teach people. Like you know, everybody's not always going to love you, but but if you do things and do them the right way, then people will respect you, which is way more important. You got a camp coming up? Uh, yes, sir. It's it, this one's through uh, Parks and Rec. The our first camp we had out at school, and and uh, we had record numbers. Like we we had over 125 kids uh, at a at a little local basketball camp. It was this tremendous? We we do it a little different. We try to make sure the kids have a ball in their hand as as much of the time as possible. It's not a uh, who's the best one on one player. You get a trophy. Who's the best three on three team? It's if you do camps like that. And again, I'm not judging those at all. It's just that usually becomes whoever the best kid is is still the best kid. And sure. so we try to do it a little differently. Uh, uh, July 7th. 17th through the 20th uh, at, at Parks and Rec. I'm, I'm doing a camp through them, uh, two different age groups. And if you go on their website, you can you can see the different times. It's at night. Um, ours was in the morning, so some people weren't able to, to get to it. So, um, you know, we, we, we talk a lot about life lessons and the, and the little things I try to teach our, our basketball players, you know, and, and students at school every day. The importance of greeting your teacher, saying hello and goodbye every day. Uh, I think it's like – Three keys to academic success. Say hello and goodbye to your teacher every day. Do do all your work on time and to the best of your ability, even if your ability is not very good, and do any and all extra credit. I think if you do those three things and treat people right, it's it's hard not to do well in the school systems the way they are now. And, and most teachers won't flunk a kid like that. Oh, yeah, certainly. We talk all the time, like, do coaches have favorites? Like, I, I do. I, mean, I have <laughs> favorites. I, you know. Like, and your, your favorites, if I said, like, to, to anybody, like, uh, you know, who's your favorite boss you ever had? Who's your favorite, like, uh, uh, you know, anybody who's in charge of any sport? Who's your favorite football player ever? It's not the best passer. It's not the best pass rusher. It's, oh, my favorite. Well, my favorite is Billy. Billy showed up every day early to practice. Billy works really, really hard. Billy's mm-hmm. a great teammate. So if you, if you think teachers and coaches don't have favorites, I mean, that's ridiculous. We all have favorites. Yeah, man. Hey, uh, uh, how do you register for the camp, Kelly, and what are the dates for? Uh, again, it's July 17th through the 20th. Uh, there's two different sessions. One is for first through third grade. The second one is for uh, fourth through seventh grade. Uh, and the, the easiest way is just to go to the Berkeley County Parks and Recreation website. Uh, if you go on there, uh, you know they'll they'll take you to a link. Or you could go to my Facebook page. It's you know it's a public page or whatever, and the two links are, are listed on there. And uh, if you go to the Ville Basketball uh, you know website, you can go mm-hmm. there as well. So Mike. Well, first of all, con- congratulations, Coach. Um, you know, when you think about Hall of Fame, it's usually after somebody retires that, that you get inducted into Hall of Fame. So kudos to you. I'm assuming you have no intentions of retiring. No, it's not, um, not, not in the plans. My wife doesn't want me at the house. She was happy, <laughs> she was happy when I left this morning. So. And, and, you know, the other thing is um, – you're you're quite right about Hedgesville that it still has that that hometown small town uh, feeling to it and and they they revere their own people uh, very much and you know to be accepted in there and and uh, given this honor of, of Hall of Fame says a lot about you and and doing the th- things the right way. Um, you know, you follow some legendary people at Hedgesville like Gilbert Miller. Um, so to be inducted into the Hall of Fame at at Hedgesville, I believe says a lot. Now I'm, I'm going to tell a little story about you that, um, you know, I've had some interactions with you in the business side of things before, and and I've been um, to Hedgesville, and you and I had, at one time had talked about some things that you wanted um, done, and I was impressed because one of your players came up while we were talking, and um, came up and started talking to you and said, Coach, you know, and he started talking, and you said, No, stop right there. I'm having a conversation with someone else. First of all, you come and address both of us. You look this man in the eye, you shake his hand, and then you ask to be excused to to start talking. And I was very impressed by that whole scenario that you took the time to tell this young man that there are uh, life etiquette. And this is way a a man um, behaves. And this is the way you interact 
um, in life. And it wasn't a basketball lesson. This was a life lesson. I was very impressed that you took the time to teach these kids life lessons um, and not always basketball. And maybe you can do a little bit of both sometimes. Maybe there's some lessons in basketball and life at the same time. But I was very impressed by that, and I just wanted to say that. So um, kudos to you. Congratulations. Well, thank you very much. Uh, you know, one of the things I talk about all the time is, uh, you know, basketball becomes an excuse for the relationships. It's uh, usually when I talk about this next part, it becomes a little difficult for me. Uh, like my, my dad died when I was nine. I grew up in a not very good house. And when I say that, I, I love my mom. Uh, love my my siblings, but it was a it was a, a house that was there was it was filled with drugs. It was filled with uh, bad behaviors, uh, and so uh, for me, uh, and and I I have a prosthesis. I have one eye. I I, I didn't know what I was going to do, but I knew I I didn't want to stay in the house. It just wasn't a very pleasant place to be, and uh, and not having a father. My my coaches. Uh, without a doubt, were the ones who taught me how to say please and thank you and yes, sir, and no, sir, and yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. And so, like, for me, like, you know, uh, like basketball is the excuse for the relationships. I mean, basketball is the reason why I have all these interactions with so many people. And uh, having those interactions uh, and those relationships gives me the opportunity to, in some way, give back uh, and, and try to, you know, uh, impact as many lives as possible. I, I still, to this day, uh, Larry Parper, who was my high school basketball coach, who ironically my freshman year cut me because I didn't, I didn't, I was class clown. In my senior year, my superlative was class clown. I think I'm a pretty funny guy sometimes. Uh, and, and he let me know that I, I didn't know the difference between, you know, when I'm trying to be funny. And, and, and lots of teachers like me, but I, uh, but, but, but sometimes I stop them from teaching. And, and and so you know he said you have to learn the difference and until you do you don't get to be on the team and uh, to this day he's you know I call him every Father's Day he's still the one that I before I get on the airplane I call him and and Jerry Wainwright the same way he was a head coach at the University of Richmond and we became very very close uh, in my professional life and uh, still th those two are the biggest two that father figures to me that I that I look up to and again I, you know. Uh, just all the little sayings I say them all the time, like they're just normal part of conversation. Like how you do anything is how you do everything. Uh, I'm an intense guy. We have games. I try really, really hard to win. If we play Monopoly, I'm going to try really, really hard to win. And when the game's over, I'm going to help clean up the board and be a good guy. But uh, you know, learning how to treat people and act right and do those small little things are far more important than how many basketball games we win or don't win. John Doyle, um, have you ever, Kelly, uh, thought about coaching in college? Yeah, well, uh, yes, sir. I, 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 uh, I've, I've had some different opportunities along the way. Uh, I also, for a period of my life, with a, was a, a single dad, uh, and I, I'm actually uh, my my son uh, sent me a, one of his. I'm, I'm a big gear guy. If you're a basketball guy, usually you're a gear guy. But uh, so my my one of my sons uh, started his own business. Uh, he was a manager at Marshall. He was the head manager for four years. He coached at UAB and um, and and it, that's Alex. And Alex is actually <laughs> Alex is like I okay. Well, Kelly has some connections in the basketball world. Uh, Alex Church has far more connections than me. Like uh, it, it is ridiculous now what he is been able to accomplish uh he has his own business it's church graphic design and what he does is everybody who's trying to get a job like everybody who tries to get jobs within the basketball industry especially at the division one level uh, everybody's portfolios are digital now uh, there's you don't send resumes anymore <laughs> uh, alex probably like is connected to about 70% of the Division One basketball staffs in the country. Uh, he does that, and uh, Adam was able to go to the United States Merchant Marine Academy, so he's on and off a ship, but he lives in uh, South Carolina. But for a long time, it was it was, uh, it was was me and the twins, uh, and, and uh, until they went away to college, uh, it, those two were with me the whole time. And I, I, have a, I have a beautiful wife. I have two great stepsons. One of them, uh, Noah Brown, plays for me now. Uh, my daughter, Hannah, uh, you know, goes to JMU as a you know exceptional person. Wants to be a teacher, so I you know I made sure she understand the financial strains of that. <laughs> it's still but, time to talk her out yeah, of it. Yeah, <laughs> nah, nah, it's a, I think it's a, it's a it's a very rewarding profession, except for you know the payday. rewarding part, yeah, yeah. except for payday, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, but but so uh, along the way, different opportunities uh, have have come and gone. Uh, and when I say that, I, I don't mean it like frivolously. Like I, mm -hmm. I just uh, I, I've thought about it, uh, but. For me, uh, growing up without a dad, uh, I, I just decided early on that one, once it was Adam, Alex, and I that 
uh, no matter what I was going to, it's, which is why I moved to Hedgesville. I mean, I, I had two other opportunities when I when I chose here, and I've I've told the story before. Gail Catlett said, "Look, man, Hedgesville High School is not going to be the easiest place in the world to win basketball games. It's just not, but it's a fantastic place for you to try to raise those boys." Uh, so I ended up taking the job. You did inherit a pretty good basketball team, though, when you arrived. You can't yeah, deny that. Yeah, no, I, I sure did. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, Brady and Kenny and, and, and Shane. And, uh, you know, one of the things that, that makes me feel really, really good is, uh, you know, uh, uh, Derek Brown's daughter uh, is, is you know, a standout athlete at our high school now. And, um, you know, uh, but, you know, seeing him and having still great interactions with, uh, you know, I, I – QJ texts me about every QJ every, Peterson. Yeah, yes, sir. Every every two weeks at least. Like QJ has a chance to uh, is a chance to play in the NBA summer league. I think uh, you know he's keeping it on the down low. I guess I just didn't. <laughs> but uh, uh, he doesn't know if that part's going to work out or not. But but QJ makes a a really really good living now playing basketball in China. Uh, he's done really really well for himself. And like th- that's what matters to me is the you know the relationships, the relationships I have with my sons, uh, the relationships I have with 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 former players and and their families. And uh, you know sometimes I, I mean I, I when I say I fight it like the. Uh, one of the hardest things that, like, if the only time you see me is on game night when I sometimes have really, really small X's and I'm playing against really, really big O's, like, I, you know, I've got to find a way to get our kids to try harder and be more intense and get them in some ways to believe they can do things that they probably shouldn't. Um, <laughs> and, and But if that's the only person you see, like, I people don't see the others. Like, like that, be that, so, that guy was the biggest threat to clipboard inventory that there was on the face of the earth. <laughs> for, for a while. For a while. And, <laughs> that was and, the highlight and, of the broadcast. Whenever you get that thing busted like yeah, Bo Jackson on I your know. leg. It's like when people joke around. Like, so we used to uh, – people used to take bets on when the jacket was coming off <laughs> and when the tie was coming off. And, like, I can look back and joke now. But, but honestly, it's like – I mean, that, that's in some ways a little embarrassing. Like, I, I get it. Be who you are. But – I, you know that was too much. I don't, I don't need to do that. I, I didn't need to do it then. Uh, and and uh, you know, but like I said, we are who we are. I, I I'm not apologizing for anything. That's for sure. But. Um you know, uh, well, I enjoyed it as a broadcaster. I thought it was very yeah. entertaining. It yeah. made it made doing a Hedgesville basketball game part of the excitement. Was when's Kelly losing the jacket? Yeah, I'll never forget. Like you guys, this is when we played in the old gym. So we're in the back gym, and we were playing. And this isn't a shot. Like it's it's in regards to Musselman, and we won the game. They, they've beaten us lots of times. It's not that, but uh, it, it was. And I remember I went back and listened to the broadcast, and uh, we literally were down. Like uh, we we hadn't scored twenty four points in the first three quarters we had scored 23 points and we were losing unmercifully <laughs> and I, I before the quarter started I, I said guys we can we can we can rush through this and get out of here or we can make this the longest game in the history of basketball and we're going to start fouling right now and we're going to and we ended up coming back and winning the game and, and uh, <laughs> you know it just was like you know we just kept fouling and fouling and fouling and they kept missing free throws and so we scored like 25 points in the fourth quarter we didn't score 25 points in the first three and I was so excited I ran out the, the ran out of the side door of, of the building after we won the game and I it was snowy and icy and I slipped and fell and banged my head <laughs> Uh, and then we did the interview with you and yeah, you had the cut on your yeah, head. Yeah. And I've had some, like, I'm mean, having some pretty, like, I one time, one game, I was so excited. We were playing so well. And, I, you know, and the, the team was better than us. And I, I can't even remember who it was. But I, you know, at the end of the first quarter, I was heading, I took off on my run to the locker room. Only problem was, it was only the end of the first quarter. So, I mean, I, you know, I'm, I, again, sometimes maybe too intense, uh, but, but certainly doing it for the right reasons. Good job. I'm going to date myself now. Uh, Kelly, do you remember a guy named George Zamberlin? I do not. I okay. Don't. George Zamberlin coached at Jefferson uh, many years ago, before you came to Hedgesville. He was so intense, he would have himself roped to the chair <laughs> for the for the basketball game. That uh, He had been thrown out of so many games and was lectured by school officials. He finally arranged, when the game started, it was this big, thick hemp rope. And it was wrapping around his legs twice and around his waist to the back of the chair. And he played the in, he was the entire game. He sat there. And that's the only way he was able to not get thrown out of the game. Yeah, that's back. You, you couldn't. There, there was a time period where you couldn't stand up. Like where head coaches weren't allowed right. to stand. Uh-huh. You had to remain seated the whole time. I, I don't. I mean, that would have been. 
I, you know, I'd have tried to get a doctor's note. That'd have been, <laughs> that, that would have been, that would have been unhealthy for me as a human being. Uh, Kel, you may have made that fourth quarter long, but uh, you were also quite famous for shortening games because you guys really perfected the hold the ball strategy and shorten the game. And in fact, that helped you win a state championship. Yeah, it, it sure did. And everybody talks about it. Like I, I recently did a, a podcast interview with uh, you know someone who does like former Longwood coaches and athletes and stuff. And, and he brought it up uh, and, um, you know, uh, it, it wasn't the, the final game where we held the ball. Although right. the final score was 33 to 32. And, and, and I, I open the, every time I talk about this, like we weren't the best team in the state. Like we weren't. Martinsburg was the best team in the state. They just were. Uh, they beat us four times that year. Uh, we were the best team in the state that weekend because we won the tournament. And and I, every time I look at our state championship trophy, there's there's still no asterisk. It's not on there. So um, <laughs> I enjoy, uh, but, enjoy but, it, man. But, but you enjoy. know, how Facebook is man. If I if I don't acknowledge that, oh yeah, well okay, Martinsburg beat us four times. Like <laughs> yeah. I, I I'll give it to you. You'll hear it. Um, but so. Um, in, in the semifinal game uh, that year, again, you talk about the life lessons. Uh, we, we had played in a tournament out of town. Uh, it was the, the Cole Classic, and uh, we, we played Morgantown. Uh, they were really good. We were really good. Uh, Martinsburg was there as well. They were really good. Back then. All four of us were ranked in the top of the state. All four of us were top five. Um, and we, we, lost to, uh, we lost to Morgantown. We were in foul trouble, and we did the same thing. And we held the ball the entire second quarter because I had my Chris Shields, QJ Peterson, um, you know, CJ Burks was younger, but he played a lot on this game on that team, and we just held the ball, and and it worked out well. Morgantown made a shot at the end, and they beat us. Um, and and QJ took to Twitter, and he he uh, he let the world know that he didn't know if he wanted to play high school basketball anymore. That he was kind of done with this, and he didn't say it in the nicest of ways, uh, which meant now we're playing Martinsburg because they got upset by Beckley. Uh, so now we're playing Martinsburg in the consolation game and in, in, in Beckley and there's lots of college coaches there and QJ didn't get to play uh, you know and his dad caught you know punish him any way you want make him run forever no I'm gonna punish him any way I want he's not gonna play uh, if he's not gonna be a good teammate and a good person he just doesn't get to play and he's a great player great kid uh, made a mistake hold kids accountable Fast forward, it's the state semifinal game. Uh, QJ has two fouls, Chris Shields has two fouls, CJ has two fouls, and it's only the you know start of the second quarter. Um, we make a decision, we're doing the same thing, and I look at QJ and I said, and "Who's going to be the loudest on the bench?" And QJ said, "Oh, it's me. I got you. I got you." Because he knew, and so we held the ball for the entire second quarter. There were we passed the ball sixty-seven times and shot a layup. Uh, sixty-seven. Uh, sixty-seven and shot a layup, and then. Um, you know, so uh, ironically, so so there are only two, again, four possessions the entire quarter. Um, and uh, so you go into halftime, it's like seven to nine or whatever it was. And um, second half, we scored 48 points. So in the second half of the same game where we held the ball for an entire quarter, our team scored 48 points, which was the most anybody scored at the state tournament that year. Um, you know, we won the game by 30-some points, and QJ had a great second half. And so it ties a lot of things in together, um, life lesson, uh, discipline, kids on the team that don't play very much. At it. Like, imagine, like, oh, you, you just held the ball. And we had the ball with three kids who don't play very many minutes at all in this in the Charleston Civic Center with people chasing them everywhere. So we were again really really proud of able to accomplish that. The state championship game, uh, Rick Green and I are really really close. Now uh, it's so much easier to share film. All you do is yes. you just hit a button. I mean it's just it's it's crazy. Um, uh, and, and back then it wasn't like the toughest thing to do. Uh, you know, it, it had progressed some at that point, but so Rick and I are really, really close and have been for a long time, uh, ever since I got here. Uh, and even though he's on the other side of the state, uh, but so we'd exchanged literally, uh, nine games each to help each other get to the championship game. We had nine games. We had half of the other team's season on tape. Uh, both of us have pretty, pretty good staffs. Uh, it just became very difficult to score, and neither one of us like shot quickly, played fast. So it became a very methodical game, and you know, fortunate enough to 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 get on top. And and you talk about another person who still to this day, like you know, your your I think your peers and coworkers can teach you life lessons. Uh, when we when we lost in the state championship game, uh, Duncan Williams senior year, another college basketball coach. He was a player. Yeah, uh, and again another another college basketball coach uh, who was part of what we did. Um, when when we lost that game, uh, we we stayed and watched Beckley 
get their championship trophy before we left. I didn't know that you're allowed to leave. I thought it was just the right thing to do. You're supposed to do it. And lots of people called and said, oh, you know, it's great sportsmanship. And I mean, it was miserable. We were sitting there just crying and, but it was the right thing to do. So we did it. Uh, when, when, uh, we were fortunate enough to beat GW Now he had just won a state championship the year before. Uh, and as, as they left, they didn't stay to watch us get our championship trophy, but what he had is kids. We'd obviously already shaken hands and everything else. Uh, he came back through the line with his team and had each one of his players shake each one of our players' hands again. Uh, he gave me a big hug and gave me some advice about the, the media part of what was about to happen. And he said, you know, no matter what, they're going to pull you. Uh, don't let them pull you until you get to be with your team first. Like, and so it's just, I, you know. Good Again, stuff. that's that, yeah. It's, it's I mean, that's how you treat people, man. That's a, that's obviously a great man. <laughs> Excuse me, Kel. This hour, this half hour flew by way too fast as it always does. I always enjoy your stories. Uh, and uh, please, if you could take a second, uh, plug the camp, how people can register, and what it costs, uh, and then we need to sure. get to our break. It's, uh, it's sixty five dollars through through Parks and Recreation. It's uh, in in July the seventeenth through the twentieth, uh, so the third week in July. Uh, it's at the Martinsburg Rec Center, uh, and uh, it's at night. Uh, I think it's right around five is the first one. I think uh, five o'clock. But if you go on the website, you can see. And again, it's broken down into two age groups: one through three, and and four through uh, four through seven. Uh, and again, we um, like I'm, I'm fortunate enough. The week before, I'll run University of Richmond's camp. Uh, so if you, and and I don't mean this in a silly way. University of Richmond pays me a little bit more than than I'm going to make at the rec center. So sure. <laughs> uh, you know, I think it's just a it's a, it's a great opportunity. I've been doing this for for obviously a long time. Had a lot of success doing it. Uh, I, I think I'm a uh, the best thing I might do as a teacher is is my adaptive PE class, uh, and as a basketball coach, uh, you know we've we've won some games. But I, I I think my staff and I do pretty well at the camp thing. Maybe a little bit better than anything else. So hopefully people will come out. And I appreciate you guys having me on. Hey, always great to visit with you, Kelly. Thank you very much.